welcome to the Care Collab on Bretonia Shilub Tolkien. This Care Collab is together with Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Inse Shop, and Rogers Orchids. And I'm quite happy to be a part of this Care Collab because I only just recently got mine, as you can see. I don't have any blooms, but I know that a channel that is participating today has blooms, so the links to those channels participating will be in the description below. And if you have come from those channels to see what I'm doing here in southern Spain with my Bretonia Shiloh Tolkien, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time, especially as I don't have any blooms to show for. As I mentioned, I only received this orchid recently from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. And well, she did all the prep work for me. She took the division and already started to grow it on into Lekka and self-watering. What I have done since then is put her into pumice because I have super, super hot and dry temperatures here during the summer. I don't have any humidity to speak of. I have to do a lot of misting around the base of the orchid. And that is always a problem when it comes to the orchid producing new growths. I have to be very mindful, very careful that I don't get too much water into the crevices of the new growth and then compromise that new growth with possible rot. I know that sounds very, very contradicting considering how hot I can get here in the summer. We can go up to 40 degrees Celsius, but I have a humidity of 30%. So the breeze and everything should dry those new growths out. And more often than not, they do. But it is not a guarantee ever, and I didn't want to risk that. So I decided to put this Bretonia Shilop Tolkien into pumice only because it gives me a much, much better humidity climate around the surface of the pots, especially when new roots grow. Bretonias being part of Brassia, they seem to have a climbing habit, which once they're divided is not so evident. But it'll come. It'll come eventually. And then the humidity around the root and the base of the orchid as she grows new roots is fundamental. And if I have to miss two, three, four times a day, many new growths, especially with the Oncidium types, won't dry out because of how their little bracts are layered around the base. The surface of my Lekka might dry out because that is what I normally use with self-watering, but that doesn't mean the growth has dried out and I have to go back in with a sprayer to mist the base again to keep that from burning any root tips as Lekka can do. The pumice has worked out really, really well. I have had this orchid now in this setup for the last three weeks approximately, and I have been flushing very, very regular in the first two weeks. Every second to third day, depending on how I saw the surface of the pumice dry out or not. But my point about flushing a lot, especially when an orchid gets into a new pot, is to keep the oxygen flow going throughout the pot. H2O, O being oxygen. Oxygen is in water, it's not just in air. So with the setup, oxygen is important to have it around the roots for healthy growth. So water provides me that oxygen and that's why I flush a lot during the first month of potting an orchid up into a new setup or even after I've done a cleanup job with the roots. I take a jug of two liters and put fresh RO water into that and just really flush that through, letting the water rise all the way up to the surface of the media, let it drain out, and seeing as the roots are not as long in this pot just yet, I leave the water level a little bit higher than the actual reservoir space that is in between the two pots. So you see, I've got my microfiber here. I only have one microfiber as a loop. Because of the pumice, it's much more water retentive and much more wicking than Lekka is, and I have the reservoir much, much higher with the level of water. I know I'm tilting the pot, but literally because the roots in the actual pot are only right about this level, I am letting the pot rest and settle on the water in the reservoir to maximize the wicking and ensure that my roots on the top get all the moisture that they need. Once the roots are long enough, then I won't have to do that and I don't choke out the roots with too much water. But as long as there's space between where the roots end and the reservoir or the water starts, early, early days, this is what I do because my climate is very, very warm. I grow mainly outdoors and for that reason, everything evaporates much, much quicker. 
gives me also a margin of a couple of days. If I miss the mark, let's say I don't flush on the second day, but I flush on the third day, my pumice on the top won't dry out. Seeing as that she's only been with me recently and the roots are only just starting to develop, I am only fertilizing at 160 parts per million. When I repotted her, I had 300 parts per million on hand, so I put that in the reservoir. But after two days, the first flush was due. I flushed all the media out and then just filled the reservoir with 160 parts per million of fertilizer. I do not want to tax the root so much. And she had already somewhat matured her bulb, so I didn't have to go in and try and do all that work. I just needed to support the remainder of what she is trying to do in maturing the bulb. And 160 parts per million is just fine, especially seeing as we are in fall. It is still quite warm during the days. The temperatures are dropping a little bit at night now. I've got around 19, 18 degrees at night, but she pretty much has done her job for the season. So all I'm doing now is supporting the root growth with the 160 parts per million of fertilizer. These are quite high light orchids, of course, Oncidium Alliance and high light, it's all relative. I have a lot of light here in Southern Spain. So I do try to keep mine somewhat in a shadier position. She might get some afternoon sun, but that is all relative with regards to the position of the sun in the sky at this moment in time. She lives on the top shelf of my blooming alley and that shelf is facing south. So based on the angle of the sun, she does get some morning sunshine. And then during the day, it's a little bit more shaded. Funny how that works. My lower shelves have more sun than my top shelf behind the white curtain. And then as the sun moves across the sky, in late afternoon, she gets a little bit more direct sun, as you can see right now. This is about the amount of sun she will get if she was still on her top shelf and I didn't move her. I have not had any pest issues. <laughs> I got a very, very clean orchid. Thank you, Fernanda, very much for that. But what I've read up about her is, um, yeah, aphids and spider mites. Okay. Spider mites especially, something to be very, very careful of because of my hot, dry climate. Aphids? Hmm, I can handle aphids. And where there's aphids, there's either happy sap or a fragrance. So that might be the answer to how fragrant is this orchid. Considering how dry my climate is, I actually have never had a problem with spider mites. I hope I never experience it. And I hope this orchid isn't the first one that brings me that experience. But that's what I've read up about possible pest issues, spider mites and aphids. My focus at this point in time is getting her to settle in before the cold winter temperatures come. Her ideal temperatures that she can tolerate is between 12 degrees Celsius and 24, 25 degrees Celsius. So I can play with her a little bit. Normally I like to bring my orchids in with the night temperatures drop below 15 degrees Celsius at night. But with pumice, it's not as cold a media as Lekka is. Lekka has the reputation of evaporative cooling. Pumice, not so much. So I can actually leave this orchid out much longer than I normally would all my other orchids that are growing in Lekka, which is great because it gives me a little bit more space indoors. <laughs> much needed. <laughs> so those are the temperatures she prefers. I am sure by the time next summer rolls around and I am going up and above 24, 25 degrees Celsius, that she will have acclimated and that she can tolerate my climate. The only thing being, what I'm anticipating, what I cannot change, and what can't be helped is my lack of humidity. So as she grows, possibly I'm going to get dry leaf tips because the humidity in the air is just not there. Whoop, that rhymed. And I do not supplement with humidifiers or misters outdoors at all. The humidity that I provide is whatever I throw on the terracotta floor below the shelf or when I go around misting. And I can be quite aggressive with my misting during June, July, and August where I can spray the whole shelf. It won't make any difference with regards to how the humidity helps the orchid from not getting brown leaf tips because that evaporates super fast because of the dry winds that I get as well. So that's one thing to anticipate, unfortunately, but I would rather grow an orchid and enjoy the blooms, grow her to the best of my ability based on my conditions than not have said orchid as long as it is within a temperature range that the orchid can handle. I have reduced seaweed, calcium, and magnesium as we're heading into the cooler months of the year. Winter, not a nice word, but I've reduced those down to next to nothing because I don't want to pump in any growth hormones into her with the seaweed. 
the calcium and magnesium. I have that in my fertilizer. So all the supplements are now out of the way and I'm just trying to get her through the winter and then we can start again together next year. And maybe in a future update, I can say, woohoo, look, I got me some blooms, which are supposed to be very, very striking. Purple Bordeaux and then a pink lip with lots of spotting that's right up my street. And I am assuming there is a fragrance. Like I said, I don't know until I experience them for myself. And then I hope we can make an update video to this care collab and I can tell you what I think of the blooms and how they smell. Thank you very much, Inse, for getting in touch, letting me know that yours is in spike, giving me plenty of heads up so that we can try and time this care collab properly so that there is a bloom to behold somewhere in these videos of ours. I appreciate that very much. Also, thank you very much, Rogers Orchids, for taking the time to join in with a video. And Fernanda, thank you to you very much because I have a Sheila Tolkien now, something I would never have bought myself because I'm always looking at shiny little Lelias. Really appreciate this gift. I hope I do her justice and I hope that a future Care Collab update will prove that I've done her justice. Everybody that's watched this video, my thanks go out to you as well. Really appreciate your time and your support. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.